Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Firefly 8SE action camera. In this video I'm going to go over its features, head out doors and compare it side by side with the GitHub G3 Duo and the Iken H6X cameras and finally I'm going to mount it on one of my quadcopters and take it for a test flight. The Firefly 8SE features a 2 inch touchscreen. It supports a Bluetooth remote controller which is sold separately. It has a video stabilization feature, it supports an external microphone which is included inside this kit. It supports Wi-Fi so you can adjust the camera settings using a dedicated app which is available on both iOS and Android. And when inside the waterproof case, it's 20 meters waterproof. Now let's quickly go over its specifications. First of all it features a Sony 12 megapixels CMOS sensor that supports super view. You can shoot up to 16 megapixel photos and 4K 30 frames per second videos. The 4K 30 frames per second does not support super view, but all the other resolution does support it. It has a 1200 mAh detachable battery, which means you can replace it. And I'm also going to test the battery life in this video. And it supports up to 128 GB micro SD cards. Now let's open the box and see everything we're getting inside. So this is everything that came inside the package. As you can see, we've got plenty of accessories. First of all, we're getting this mini USB external microphone, which I'm not going to test in this video. A cleaning cloth, a spare back door for the camera waterproof case, a USB to mini USB cable that will enable you to charge the camera, mounts and brackets, a cover for the lens and a lens hood, Velcros, 3M stickers, zip ties, some Hawkeye stickers, the instructions manual, both in English and Chinese, and finally the camera itself, which is already placed inside the waterproof case. So this is the camera, and as you can see, it looks pretty much like any other action camera, which means it's going to fit all the GoPro compatible accessories. One thing that I didn't mention before is that this camera is available in two versions, so you can either get a 170 degrees lens, which is the one that I have, and you can also choose a 90 degrees lens option, which is a little bit more expensive, but then the videos and images that you're going to shoot are going to be less distorted. On the front of the camera, we can find over here the microphone, then this LED indicator that is going to tell you if you are in photo mode or video mode. When this LED is going to be blue, it means that you are on video mode, and when it's green, it means that you are on photo mode. Then we've got this small selfie mirror, the on and off button slash mode button. So short pressing it is going to turn on the camera, and long pressing it is going to shut it down. And if you're going to short press it when the camera is already on, it's going to switch between photo mode and video mode. On the bottom you can find a tripod mount and the battery door. The battery is a 1200 mAh Lion battery. It took me 2 hours and 50 minutes to charge it at 1 ampere. And I already tested the battery life and I got 2 hours of recording time on 1080p 60 frames per second, which is pretty impressive and surpassed the specifications that state that it will last for 1.3 hours. On the side we've got two navigation buttons, on top the OK button that will also enable you to start and stop the recording of videos and take photos. And over here we can find a mini USB port that will enable you to charge the camera using the provided USB to mini USB cable and you can also use it with a server connector and then you will be able to power the camera with LiPo batteries between 2 to 6 cells and also use the video output feature. In addition, this USB port will enable you to control the camera externally using a receiver, so just refer to this section of the instructions manual if you want to learn how to use it. Next to the mini USB port, we can find a micro HDMI port. And finally on the back, we can find a 2 inch capacitive screen, a slot for a micro SD card, it supports up to 128 GB micro SD cards, and the playback button. Setting up the camera can be either done by the touchscreen or by the navigation buttons on the side. Pressing the right arrow button is going to take you to the mode selection where you can enter setup, record and etc. Pressing the top part of the camera is going to take you to this screen where you can set the Wi-Fi, lock the camera, turn it off and also turn on and off the Bluetooth. Touching the middle of the screen is going to turn on and off the OSD. Pressing the play button is going to take us to the gallery so you can see the videos and photos that you took and you can also access the same gallery by pressing the gallery icon over here. 
Now I'm not going to go for all the options of the camera because I think it's going to be very boring. So what I advise you to do is to shoot videos at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and then the gyro sensor is going to be on. And the video stabilization, I think, in my opinion, is one of the best features of this camera. As you're about to see in the following video, I think it performed quite well. It did better, in my opinion, than the other two cameras that I compared it with. And also when mounted on my quadcopter, I think that the image was very stable and I was pretty surprised with the results. The next thing I'm going to do is to head outdoors and compare these three cameras side by side in different lighting situations and then I'm going to include flight footage that was taken on 4K and 1080p 60 frames per second. I hope you would enjoy the rest of this video, as always if you have any questions feel free to ask it in the comment section down below, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.